In the 1920s, if you were rich and rakish, you drove a speedster, two seats, and a face full of wind. Well, not a lot has changed since that time with that feeling. This is the Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette Speedster. It's priced at $139,000 and has a top speed of 185 miles per hour. Hi everybody, I'm Dallas Rains, and this is definitely fast class travel in the exciting world of speed and beauty. On today's show, we'll see how the automobile has become a work of art. From $20,000 bronze sculptures to nostalgia paintings from a bygone era to the outrageous caricatures of Ed Big Daddy Roth. Then we look at one of today's premier drag racers, Tom McEwen. He's back in top fuel, and who knows? History could repeat itself with the famous mongoose snake battle. Plus, a behind-the-scenes look at how they make those great-looking automotive calendars, the ones with the girls on them. Imagine the excitement of owning this legendary Porsche 917 race car for only a few thousand dollars. Or how about this stunning Ferrari Daytona that never needs any maintenance? Well, you can if the car in question is a magnificent work of automotive art. If you love the beauty of speed, this is the art for you. For many people, a car is the ultimate work of art. For others, a car is a canvas on which to paint a work of art. But to a growing number of artists, the car inspires a work of art. Automotive art itself has been around since the car. I mean, people began drawing pictures. More and more artists uh, entering the field all the time, and uh, the, the quality of the art is, uh, is becoming better every year. Today, there seems to be something for everyone, like the super shiny, ultra-realistic paintings of Harold Cleaver and the utterly outrageous caricatures of Ed Big Daddy Roth are the nostalgic paintings of bygone days, and the one-of-a-kind $20,000 bronze sculptures collected by former L.A. Times publisher Otis Chandler. Those are famous moments in racing, yeah. They, they are all depicting uh, some particular special moment in racing history. There's two Mercedes in there. One, uh, Phil Hill. Uh, Phil Hill is in the, in the car, and then uh, another one, uh, a man that, uh, well, Juan Fangio, uh, famous uh, Mercedes from the 50s that he won several races in. Those are by Stan Weinlass. And while the collectors of these unique works may be few, the collectors of this stuff are many. They're the legendary Rat Fink t-shirts from Big Daddy Raw, and he'd be surprised to hear you call it art. Hundreds of items in the catalog that are just silly, dumb things like this called rat feet stuff and my catalog is called dumb junk catalog because it's all dumb junk his designs are so loud you can almost hear them they were a natural outgrowth of his youth we were the back alley cruisers we raced from stop sign to stop sign rubber all the way engine noise that's the kind of stuff that you know really thrills me And one night I was sitting there talking to this guy about Mickey Mouse. I says, now Mickey Mouse is, in the early days was a little ratty one-stick figure. And I says, look what he is nowadays in Fantasia. And I says, if you go back far enough, this is what Mickey Mouse's father would look like. A, a real rat, not a mouse, see? And uh, <laughs> the guy laughed so hard, I thought, well, I'll just make a t-shirt like that. Years later, Roth remains amazed by his little monster's success. Little kids would walk up and they want some rats and stuff with the big eyes bulging and the veins in it. And the moms and dads would always pull them away from me like I was a weirdo, you know. But yet, some of them got it somehow. 
and 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 through the years that attitude has changed because now the moms are the ones that grew up with it saying no you can't have it they buy it for their kids and it has made Roth such a legend that he and his rat fink have themselves inspired a work of art the $600 sculpture sits next to another big daddy Don Gartland's at the gallery automania outside of Detroit it's one of the many new galleries attracting the serious collector kind of cover all the different fields of the automobile, classic cars, sports cars, race cars, hot rods. The growing market has encouraged new young artists like Guy Scheiflin. Shows the uh, stock 37 Ford across the back and the street rod version in the foreground. We actually pinstripe street rods for money, so this was one that I had pinstriped. Larry Crane, art director for Automobile Magazine, has his own explanation for the new boom. As cars get more expensive and more difficult to live with, this is the kind of car you can have hanging on your wall and see it every morning. It doesn't have to live in your garage in the winter. You can enjoy it all the time. And just $350 will get you this classic Mustang, or this 39 Ford. A Corvette goes here for only $750. And this race car is yours for $950. Here's a car they can hang on their wall for a tenth of the money or, or one percent of the money and enjoy every day. But some prices are moving as fast as the cars the paintings depict. These indie cars would cost you nearly $10,000. That makes this painting by David Lord a bargain at $7,500. This is a painting I did based on the uh, finish of the race in 1990 uh, when uh, Emerson Fittipaldi and Al Jr. were coming around for the finish and uh, uh, a miscalculation was made and uh, Al Jr. Went into, the, went into the wall. Perhaps Guy Shively says it best for the artist as well as the collector. We're into art and into cars and this is a perfect blend. The perfect blend indeed for people who find beauty in speed.